Hello everyone and welcome. You know, a couple of years ago I did a review of a very convenient thermal imaging camera that you attach to your cell phone. At that time, this seemed like a really great idea because at the time most thermal imaging cameras had the tiny little screens that were only one or two inches in size. With this attachment camera, you could use a much larger screen to be able to see what you're doing. Well, after using it for a while, I found it a bit annoying to use because my hand always wound up holding the phone in a way that blocked the camera lens. Oddly enough, that camera doesn't allow you to rotate the image, so it made holding the phone rather awkward. So after many months, I finally came across a new thermal imaging camera that has a ton of features and looks and works just like a regular cell phone. No more hassles of an awkward attachment on your phone. This thermal imaging camera looks and feels like a regular cell phone. So I decided to give this camera a try and see if it solves the problem that I've had experienced with the other camera. So if you've been looking for a full featured thermal imaging camera that has a ton of features and a large screen, stick around as I unbox and test this puppy. Alright guys, so when you unbox this puppy, this is everything you get. So let's talk a little bit about some of the features that this guy has, but before we get started testing this guy, do me a big favor and hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already, that way you can notify it every time I do another product review video, DIY project, or a sale at a big box store where I can help you save more money. Alright then, so this is the HP96 Thermal Imaging Camera from HSF Tools. Available on Amazon, link in description below. At the time of making this video, this camera kit retails for $259.99. But they also have a $60 discount coupon on their Amazon page, bringing it down to around $200. The warranty on this guy is one year, and the dimensions on this guy are 5.5 inches by 3.25 by half an inch in thickness. So what do you get when you unbox this guy? Well, you get the camera itself. You get the owner's manual. It tells you everything about this guy, how to use it, calibrate it, all that kind of good stuff. You get a cable to be able to power this guy up because it does have an internal battery. You get a lanyard and you get a convenient little pouch to keep it on your belt when you're walking around and taking care of stuff. Now, this camera is powered by a 2100 milliamp hour lithium ion rechargeable battery that has a runtime of up to four hours of continuous use. That means it'll last you longer if you're turning it on and off throughout the day. This camera is IP54 dust and water resistant and has a drop rating of up to 6 feet. That means you can get it a bit dusty, a bit wet, and drop it a little bit, but don't go crazy. It is a sensitive piece of equipment. This camera also has a convenient tripod mount on the bottom, so you don't always have to be handheld if you don't want to. This camera has a 96 by 96 resolution in thermal mode and 240 by 240 resolution in all the other modes. And it has several modes, as I'll tell you. The different visual modes that this camera has are thermal, fusion, picture-in-picture, -picture, blending, and visual, which is like a normal camera. This camera allows you to take still pictures and video with audio. All the images and video are stored internally on a flash memory. The internal memory can store up to 30,000 images or 20 hours of video. This camera has a wide 50-degree field of view, giving you a nice wide-angle view of whatever it is that you're looking at. This camera also has auto tracking on the screen, which I'll show you in a moment, where it gives you a minimum, maximum, and the center of what it is that you're testing. You can also set up alerts where the camera will alert you to anomalies at a range that you set up. For example, if a temperature is too high or too low, the low a range that you predetermine, the camera will alert you. This camera has a convenient adjustment for the types of material being scanned. You can select in the settings what materials you're scanning, such as concrete, wood, dirt, etc. This way you can have a much more accurate reading of whatever it is that you're testing. This camera also has eight color palettes for temperature range, so that way you can choose the color range that is most convenient for you. This camera has a built-in flashlight to help you see things better in dark areas. This camera also has adjustments for temperature and distance, and that way you can select metric or imperial units. The temperature can also be set to Kelvin. So this little guy seems like a very convenient thermal imaging camera with a lot of features and a large view screen. So let's take a little closer look at this guy and see how it performs. 
All right, guys, let's take a little closer look at this little camera and get a little bit better acquainted with it. See a nice big camera, pretty much about the same size as a cell phone, so it's convenient to handle and to deal with. Uh, you're already accustomed to a cell phone, the same basic size and shape, so rectangle. You have a nice three and a half inch screen there, so nice big screen when you compare it to other thermal imaging cameras. And that's the thing that I liked about the other one that I got, but it's a little tiny attachment that goes on the side of your cell phone. And whenever you want to grab it with your hand, your hand is always blocking it over there. So I found that rather annoying after using it for a little while. You can't flip the image on this one where you should be able to have no problem at all because you just rotate the camera wherever you find it convenient. Anyway, so basically uh, on the top here, you have the on off button. And then this is your record button. You can take pictures or take videos, whatever you want to do. On the side over here, not much going on, just a place to put your lanyard. And there is your tripod hole right there. On this side over here is where you have the USB connector to power up the battery. And then on the back here, that is where you have the camera lens, because this will work just like a regular camera, as I'll show you in a moment, your thermal camera, and then your light right there. So you can use it as a flashlight if you're in a dark area. You can use this anywhere. It's thermal, so it doesn't matter if you're in a lighted or dark area. It'll work just fine. So there you go. That's pretty much everything that this guy has. But uh, uh, as far as the screen goes, all the controls, you see the menu right there on both sides. And you pretty much select whatever you want because it is a touch screen. And then right here, you also have the temperature range so you can see what is happening compared to the temperature range on the side there from the low to the high and all sorts of useful information on there. There you can select that guy and you can select where you want those guys to go as far as the calibration. You see it keeps moving around because it will always be looking for a minimum, a maximum and a center point. But you can change those up there using that one there. Now, this guy here, you can select different things where, let me show you right here. You see right there how it shows you? Let me show you first as far as the thermal imaging. Right now, I have it set to thermal imaging. And you can see right there, there's my hand, and it shows you a good, clear picture of my hand. And then I take it away, and you see the heat that my hand left behind on the countertop there. So very efficient as far as that goes, and it gives you a good representation of my hand. I'm going to shoot some video with this in a moment so you'll be able to see a little bit better what is going on. So you see the uh, still the imprint left behind, but it'll show you instantly the difference between the hot surface and the cooler surface. And then it'll radiate more depending on what you're looking at. But you can select right there. We're looking at uh, that guy there where it gives you this one actually gives you like an AI generated uh, image where you have a little bit more clear picture. You can see my hand very clear. You can see a lot of detail, and I'll show you that in a moment, but you can see a lot of detail on my hand. If you want to go 100% thermal, then you go to that one, and it's a little less detail. It's more focused on the heat, where you see the difference in heat and so forth. So you have two different ways of using it at the thermal camera, where you can see more or less detail, depending on what you want to look at. Now, on the other ones, you can move it up, and you can select this one here, which gives you a picture in picture. You see, you can see your hand. I can see my hand right there, and I can focus on a specific spot if I want to do that. So that's very convenient if you need to do it that way. This little guy right there allows you to set the different ranges that you want to have as far as sensitivity and so forth. Let's go back over here, and then this guy, like I said before, you can use it as a regular camera. And it works very nicely as a regular camera. Look at the great detail that it gives you. You can take pictures, like for example, if you're uh, taking thermal imaging inside of a room or you're looking at a machinery or something like that, you can take pictures of what you're looking at first and then switch over to the thermal imaging. That way you can represent whatever it is that you wanna show to a customer or something like that or for your own records, whatever you wanna do. So you just flip back to the thermal one and then all of a sudden you take pictures and show, hey, look, this is what's going on in your situation and then you know better what's going on or that one there fusion where it fuses the two things together and it gives you greater detail and i'll show you all that in just a moment like i said so a lot of different things and you can go into the settings right there go into the menu set up the uh, temperature range and what you're scanning and all that i'm not going to bother with that because it's not that important but let's look at this one here go back there and also you can change the different color of whatever it is that you want to deal with, whatever colors are more convenient for you, whatever you're used to using. If you like, uh, you know, more blues, more reds, whatever you want to do, you can change to that as you saw right there. You can go to black and white. You can go to whatever 
it is that you like best. I prefer the reds and the yellows, but if you like the blues, you can go. <laughs> Not only for music, if you like the blues in the spectrum, there you go. You can change as far as that goes as well. So it gives you a lot of different palettes that you can choose from. I like that one best, so we'll leave it there. I think it's more representative. You want to see the hot as far as red, yellowish, that kind of color, and the cool areas more bluish. So that's the way I prefer to see it. Anyway, so let me shoot some footage on this, and then we'll uh, take a little closer look after that, after I get done with that. All right, guys, and here we are looking at the motor on my Mustang. I'm shooting through the camera right now, and you can see also, you can hear, I should say, the sound of the motor in the background. I recorded the sound as well, so that way you can see that this will record audio and video. So you can see on the screen very well, it gives you a lot of clarity, very sharp image as far as what you're looking at. You're not looking only at thermal. Remember, I have this in diffusion mode, where it's thermal and it basically has an overlay of the image, like an AI generated image, let's say. So you can see the motor very, very clearly. You're not just looking at a thermal imaging, you're looking at the picture of the motor itself in great detail so you can see very closely what you're looking at when you're looking at the temperature changes. You see the readings up in the corner and you see the display on the side telling you everything that's going on. You also see the min and the max indicators moving around back and forth giving you uh, information as to what you're looking at. You can always remove those. I'll shoot some footage in a moment showing you without those removed what it looks like. But with those guys there, it gives you pinpoint information as far as the temperature goes of what you're looking at. But look at the detail that I've shown you. You can look at the alternator there. You can see the plenum. You can see the water reservoir. You can see the water pump back there. You see how it's starting to get hot already. You can see the belt spinning. You can see everything in really great detail where a lot of thermal imaging cameras just give you colors, but they don't give you any real information as far as the clarity of the image that you're looking at. So like I said, this uh, has a lot of adjustability to it. You can change it around and we're going to go up to my office right now and I'm going to shoot in an office so you can see what it looks like when you're looking at uh, different types of materials and what those uh, heat represent. And here we are in my office and we're looking at my computer right now and you can see this little puppy is putting out quite a lot of heat right there. Modern computers put out quite a bit of heat. You can see the processor right there really hot in the middle and you can see the power supply in the back putting out a lot of heat reflecting against the wall. You can see my power back up over there where you can see that it's really hot on the top portion. That must be where the transformer, the batteries are, something like that. I don't know. But you see that I took away the indicators. They're not jumping around the screen there anymore. So you can see that if you don't want to be distracted by that, you don't have to have it. You can take those little guys away. And look at the clarity. Like I said, you can see everything that is right there on my desk in great detail. You can see the keyboard. You can see the phone. You can see my glasses on there. You can see the mouse. You can see everything that is situated on the desk so it gives you a lot of detail you can practically read the screen and that's my router back there that guy gets really hot so you can see everything that's going on in great detail and it's very convenient in that respect so a nice little camera does a very good job as far as i'm concerned all right guys there you have it a review and demonstration of a very convenient and easy to use thermal imaging camera i think this little camera did a great job it's also very intuitive and easy to use since it works just like the camera on your cell phone. It's very affordable, plus it has a lot of features and customization. This camera has more features than the previous one that I tested, and it costs less. A great little camera for the DIYer or the professional. Whether you want to see if you have a leak somewhere, or you want to test your HVAC, or whatever projects you have in mind, this little camera can help you with that. It also allows you to take photos and videos of whatever you're looking at, which is great for keeping track of before and after when you're doing repairs. So if you're looking for a compact and affordable thermal imaging camera, check out the links below for all the details. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hit that thumbs up button, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye-bye for now.